The Sims has been quite successful over the years, garnering millions of players, topping sales charts, and becoming one of the most enjoyed and legendary gaming franchises to date. Over the years, we've seen four main titles in the Sims series, which are the only four that I'm going to talk about because obviously they are the most important ones to talk about. My personal favorite title in the series is The Sims 2, and I've noticed as a longtime fan of the franchise that it has gotten much worse over time for one major reason. The Sims series is being ruined by those who oversee it. The game itself isn't bad. The games are fun and there's plenty of fun to be made by the player, but my biggest pet peeve that also happens to be helping destroy the game series is the greedy and shady business tactics of EA. The Sims is a more casual game than games like Star Wars Battlefront 2 or anything like that, so I mean, I would understand why most fans are, you know, generally okay with what's happening, but it's because they don't really see what's going on. I mean, obviously some do, like myself, but over time the things in the game, they get cut out and they get sold as, you know, what are they, stuff packs and DLC? And I'm not talking about just like a few things here and there either. I mean, I'm talking about literally anything and everything they can possibly cut out of the game. You want to own pets? DLC. Live in the big city in an apartment? DLC. Want to own a bowling alley or some other kind of business? DLC. Hot tubs? DLC. Movie nights with your sim friends? DLC. Victorian Garden DLC. Ice Cream Makers DLC. Toddler Stuff DLC. Children Bedroom Decorations DLC. Slip and Slides DLC. And this doesn't even really include the game packs. I mean, they have over time just found a way to cut the most basic things out of the game in order to sell back to you. This is already an issue in the gaming industry, but I mean, like, what other game do you know that's, you know, a life simulation game like The Sims that will sell you the ability to develop your parenting skills, have family activities, own pets and buy them things, own a restaurant and go out to eat, take a day at the spa, go camping, or have seasons, literally seasons. They will sell you the ability to have a full year weather cycle and a few holidays to celebrate. Apparently it was too hard to just go the route of all the other games, you know, in history that have decided that they can add things like rain elements and sunshine and snow into maps or elements of the game without charging their players like $20. They will even sell you the ability to properly parent your sim kids and have pets. Keep in mind, these DLC packs, they're not like $1.99 or anything, you know? Oftentimes, they're $10, $20, or upwards of about $50. These are the most basic things that we do in our lives, and in order to really enjoy these things and make the life of your Sims more like real life, you know? The point of playing the game is to just live a life that, you know, most people can't live. But you have to buy so much DLC. You have to feed so much greed from EA. There are things that are in DLCs like the Vampire Pack and the Jungle Adventures Packs, and I entirely understand these being DLCs, because they're also not the most universally experienced events in the average lifetime. What person do you know who doesn't have a family, who doesn't have, never has decided to have kids, never will decide to have kids, never had a pet in their lives, never wants a pet in their lives, doesn't own an ice cream maker or a slip and slide, or never went out to eat, or had a movie night with their friends, you know? Th these DLCs are just the most ridiculously mundane parts of our lives that we take for granted, just put into DLCs for you to buy. So like 1% of everyone is just the people that this game is supposed to keep the base game towards? I mean, why do all the experiences of almost all people on Earth have to be sold in expansion packs for a life simulation. The game is already $40 on PC, $60 on console when it's not on sale, and I did a little bit of math. If you want to buy The Sims 4 and all of the DLC for the game, you're spending well over $500, maybe even $600 at the time that this video was made if you can't catch anything on sale. And I'm sure that there will be plenty more DLC for you to buy in the coming months, and did you know that the game quite literally has a DLC for a DLC? You have to buy a DLC to have pets like cats and dogs, but there's another DLC that gives you stuff for the pets. So, if you get this Pet Stuff DLC without buying the Cats and Dogs DLC, you have entirely wasted your money because all of the stuff makes no sense. I remember this meme, right, about video games where it, it showed old times, like, you know, early 2000s, and it was a hamburger, right, and there was, you know, the bun, the hamburger, the cheese, the tomato, the ketchup, the mustard, 
you know, the lettuce. And it was all there except for the buns. The buns were the DLCs or expansion packs that came out on the CD or whatever, you know, maybe a year or two after the game launched. And then it showed, like, 2016's gaming, and it showed that just the buns were the base game. The tomato was a DLC, the lettuce, the ketchup, the mustard, the meat, everything else was DLCs or pre-order bonuses. Well, if you broke it down even further, every single atom of the entire hamburger would be a DLC except for a few on the meat patty because literally everything in the game is basically a DLC except for the few things that you actually get at launch. Actually, remember that time that The Sims 4 didn't even launch with, you know, swimming pools or toddlers for literally no specific reason, even though that they had these in previous titles? Yeah, a lot of fans remember that, because they had these features, like I said, in previous games, and they just decided that they weren't necessary for launch. I'm not exactly sure why, but I'm assuming that they were at some point planning on releasing these as DLCs to resell later. But they did reintroduce the toddler stage for free, that's only because fans had an entire uproar. This was one of the only times I've seen that. But the fans were mad when this all came out, right? And they basically went to social media and just started tearing up a new one. And all of a sudden, you know, later on after launch, you know, toddlers come back for free. But even then, if you were going to do that, then why even take it out in the first place? You know, like instead of cutting content from the game, and believe me, The Sims 4 lacks content. Shouldn't you be focused on adding more? Shouldn't you instead focus on the idea that giving more players more things to enjoy without ripping their wallets from them is going to make them happier? No, instead there is this new tradition forming in the series in which the games will have less content and more and more DLC. Of course, the older games like Sims 2 and Sims 3, they had expansion packs, they had the stuff packs, but they were hardly as bad as it is in Sims 4. I mean, the issue alone is going to single-handedly ruin the Sims. At some point, people have to start seeing this as more of an issue, right? Even if you're just a casual gamer who is playing the game once in a while and not really keeping up on industry news or anything, you eventually have to see that, you know, spending hundreds upon hundreds of dollars to get some of the most basic things is highway robbery, right? The worst thing that you can do to a game like The Sims is take content out of the game that used to be there or should logically be there for free and then put it behind a paywall. And of course, EA isn't the only company doing this, they're just the worst offender of this kind of scheme. Back when The Sims launched with enough content and the expansions were actually adding things of value to the game that weren't just basic traits of everyone's lives with a price tag, the games sold better. In fact, even though the two titles are both older, both The Sims 3 and The Sims 2 outsold The Sims 4. There isn't really an excuse anymore. I mean, we have the most people ever playing video games right now. The Sims 4 has been out for four years now. Each of The Sims games gets on average about five years to be the newest game in the franchise. And unless The Sims 4 literally doubles its sales already, and then adds some more from now until a Sims 5. The game won't ever touch the sales figures of The Sims 3, which is the best-selling game in franchise history, and it still won't touch The Sims 2 most likely. That, that seems like even more of a stretch too. The Sims is being ruined by its developers. It's not being ruined by unplayable titles that are unplayable because the game sucks. It's just, the it's unplayable, it seems like, because of corporate greed from EA. Instead of focusing in on making a really good title with great simulation, fun ways for players to make gameplay unique, and giving players a really great open sandbox to make a great game out of, The Sims has just been recalibrated to be this big money machine for EA where they can really take advantage of casual players. Honestly, that's all it really boils down to. If you look even at games like Battlefield and of course Battlefront, these games are not really the casual player's delight, you know? Most of the people playing these games are storied fans of all kinds of different video game franchises. They've been playing games probably their entire lives, but the the Sims appeals to a different category of people. It's just a casual game where there's no real objective except for to play however you really want to, and it lets people play out their fantasies and stuff, and it's got that cool simulation, of course, it's the entire reason the game works. So, I mean, it appeals to a different crowd of people than the usual EA game, and if you notice, they really pull it out on all these casual players across all kinds of different games. FIFA, Madden, The Sims, all these casual games are just littered with corporate greed. And this is exactly why the mobile version of the game was created in the first place. So on top of hundreds of dollars in DLC that you can get for the actual game, you can now also dump money into the mobile version and make sure your sims are on the go and fueling the money machine. Unfortunately, all of this greed is going unnoticed by most sims fans. I mean, if you're a fan like me and you're listening to what I'm saying, you have to realize 
that these hundreds of dollars in DLC are not okay. Imagine how mad people would be if they went to a movie theater, they watched the movie, you know, pay $15 to get in, and the first 15 minutes of the movie is covered by that base cost. But if you wanted to watch every 10 minute interval all the way to the end of the movie, that's another 20 to $40 depending. You would think that if that was the norm in that industry over there, in the movie industry, that uh, movie theaters would not really uh, exist anymore because people are not going to pay $500 to go see a movie. But The Sims has infinite replay value, Optimus. It has hours upon hours of content to play in. Yeah, that's true, it has much more content in it than a movie or anything else you can really try and compare it to. But that does not give them an excuse to completely just destroy their customers with these shady practices. I mean, when you have a simulation game where it's based entirely around the player's decision and the environment that's provided, it isn't acceptable to then decide that most of that environment should come out and then basically just put it hostage to greed. I don't care that DLC really exists, I mean obviously DLC is something important to keeping most games alive for multiple years, it's becoming a necessary thing, but DLC is done best when it's in the best interest of players and not the company, which it happens way too rarely. EA is taking advantage of The Sims and these casual players who play it. There isn't anything wrong with being casual, but fans of the series have to stand up to this. When EA tried to strong arm the Star Wars fans with greed, it didn't work out because because fans backlashed. Some governments began to constitute loot boxes as gambling and while buying these packs in The Sims are not really gambling, it's just taking advantage. I also get sick of hearing the fake argument that recreating all the content in The Sims is really hard. It takes them time to recreate everything, which, first of all, it hardly does. We have the best technology that we've ever seen in history. This is a publisher with all of The Sims money in the world, as many employees as they could possibly need to make a game like this, and like I said on average, they have like five years to make these games. And even most importantly, most of the content is actually already made. You don't even have to really remake and create much more different stuff because, I mean, like, you know, swimming pools, toddler stages of development, and other content have been in the game before. You can just port it and update the textures, boom! Voila, this argument is entirely invalid. It's literally an excuse to try and cover up the throne of greed. There is a reason that this company has been voted the worst company in America on several different occasions. It's not because they're focused on creating great games with plenty of fans to enjoy and putting the community priorities over their own checking accounts. I mean, that's in, that's in the end what's ruining The Sims. That's, in the end, what is ruining The Sims as a franchise. I, I have a feeling that it's going to end up killing The Sims for good someday, and that's sad, but there is still some hope, I guess. Maybe Sims fans will someday just revolt against this and make EA change like Battlefront fans did, and in the glory days of this franchise, you could just literally play the game and feel satisfied. Obviously, some people feel satisfied with the newest game, but like I said, they just don't really see what's going on. I mean, you could pretty much do whatever you wanted, but now you're just so limited unless you're hundreds of dollars into this maze. The games get smaller and smaller, but get better graphics each time around, and while yes, graphics are a great part of video games, I think many of us would argue that great gameplay is more important than the graphics. If you're right now looking to get The Sims 4 but you haven't played The Sims 2 or The Sims 3, I advise you not to make that decision. Just get an older version, get a more fun game with more to do right off the bat, and you're not going to regret that decision very much. I had hundreds of hours into both The Sims 2 and 3, and I have dozens of hours into The Sims 4. I've watched a great franchise that I love fall victim to corporate greed, and that sucks. Greed is ruining The Sims, and it's about time we all stop it. If people didn't financially support EA with hundreds of dollars in ridiculous DLC and then stick up for them on social media, this wouldn't be happening to this degree. EA and Activision are hand in hand with this kind of crap, and the entire gaming industry is suffering from it. Keep in mind, EA's wrath, like I said, is not limited to The Sims. I mean, Battlefront, Battlefield, Titanfall, FIFA, Madden, virtually all of their titles have been subject to this kind of greed, but The Sims is sacred, I mean, it's changed gaming forever and it's at risk. Fans need to stand up together and protect it. If there is a Sims 5, one hasn't been announced yet, 
Hopefully they've listened to the fans like me who have spoken out against this. Hopefully the decline in sales when there's a decline in launch content and gameplay spoke to them since that's them losing even more money that they obviously want. If you're not a Sims fan and you're watching this and this video makes you think of another series going through this, I mean, speak out about that. When people sit around and allow these things to happen and they don't say or do anything about it, the problem gets worse. I mean, it was already bad in The Sims 4, it's gonna be even worse in The Sims 5 if we don't make it apparent that we don't appreciate the tactics from EA. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. We're on the way to 100,000 subscribers. To make sure to help me reach that goal, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for always to get live updates on your phone, tablet, computer, maybe even your TV, I'm not sure, about all of my newest content right as it comes out and live streams in the future where I'll be playing games and talking to fans. Follow me on Twitter for memes, thoughts, and updates at sub to Optimus. Join the Discord linked below to talk to me and other fans and check out www.optimusstudios.org for more. Until my next video, guys, this is Optimus, wondering what happened to The Sims, and signing out.